it's hard not to feel a little rage sometimes uh, when the entire world is sitting around doing absolutely nothing to stop a genocide uh, in the 21st century. Uh, really quite upsetting, you know? Rage is, is an appropriate emotion. Ah, uh, yes, another pro-Hamas Democrat in New York feels the rage because Hamas is losing their war against the Jews. So naturally, a Democrat, a white, suburban, college-educated Democrat voter, is filled with rage. He should probably self-immolate. It's the best kind of Democrat suicide attack, better than the violent, murderous suicide attacks that the Democrats launch so frequently. You know, like on a baseball field in Alexandria, Virginia, shooting Congressman Steve Scalise and wanting to murder the entire Republican baseball team, but gunned down by the police. Not suicide by police, a suicide attack. Totally different, not the same thing at all. Well, welcome back. Now, let me get to uh, let me get to some of this, uh, some of this crazy. Because yesterday, uh, one of the things that was going on yesterday was the funeral for an American citizen murdered just days ago by the savages of Hamas in the Gaza, where they had held him as a hostage for more than three hundred and thirty days, when Israeli troops were young men uh, getting close to the the tunnel where they were holding these hostages the troglodytes decided to shoot him in the head. Uh, His name was Hirsch Goldberg Polin, and Hirsch Goldberg Polin had uh, been held an American citizen, dual citizenship, also an Israeli citizen. And uh, Hirsch's mother, whose name is Rachel Goldberg Polin, was speaking at his funeral while Democrat Party mobs were attacking New York City with red smoke bombs and flares and, uh, you know, being uh, uh, generally morally and culturally reprehensible swine, pig dogs, schweinhund. But here is the mother of, uh, of Hirsch Goldberg Pullen. Hirsch Goldberg Pullen was shot in the head and murdered by the savages after brutalizing him and torturing him for more than 330 days. And when people that might have been rescuers got close, they killed him and five other hostages the other day. Their bodies found by civilized people who have to put up with this. Rachel Goldberg Poland. Among the hostages are eight American citizens. One of those Americans is our only son. Mm-mm-mm. Our only son and uh, now murdered and um, eulogizing her son. She was, of course, brought to uh, tears. Now, keep in mind that uh, this woman, Rachel Goldberg Poland, and her husband, John Poland, were invited to the Democratic National Convention to speak because Jews think that they're liberals and that the Democratic Party is liberal. A lot of Jews do. Uh, It's time you get past that, boys and girls. Uh, this is Rachel Goldberg Poland at the Democratic National Convention. That was the cut I did play. I'm sorry. I thought you played the wrong cut. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, and then that's a sh- that was her at the DNC. All right, my apologies, at the Democratic National Convention. Now, uh, her husband also spoke there, but let's now let's go to her eulogizing her son yesterday. Wrong button. Okay, sweet boy, go now on your journey. I hope it's as good as the trips you dreamed about, because finally, my sweet boy, finally, 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 finally to see. I see, and um, uh, Rachel Goldberg Pullen eulogizing her son yesterday in Israel, and I uh, saw a little bit of the video of the funeral this morning, and I think I recognize the the cemetery in uh, Jerusalem. It's a, it's a small country, and these are not big cities. And I, I think it's the one where, uh, where Oscar Schindler is buried. Um, but uh, never mind that. Now, in New York City yesterday, there was a man, I, I, I uh, sized him up as being Jewish, since he was wearing a yarmulke and had an Israeli flag, a, f- a five or six foot Israeli flag wrapped around his neck and over his shoulders, 
and he's watching the madness in the streets of, of New York City when, and his name is Joseph Borgen, Joseph Borgen was watching the madness in New York City, the pro-Hamas, anti-Israel madness, which is 100% Democrat Party owned, operated, and driven. And uh, I, I, I'm going to take him to be a lifelong Democrat, New Yorker, Jewish, Joseph Borgen. Maybe his eyes are beginning to open. How all this is being handled uh, by President Biden and Kamala Harris, will it change how you vote? One thousand, I, I wasn't previously such a political person. Now I'm a single policy voter, Israel straight through and through. And I mean, look, at what, isn't Kamala is the one who said she sympathizes with the human emotion of these protesters? What are you, what are you sympathizing with, terrorism? Joe Biden, I mean, where is he? Has he, even, has he made a speech about anything? I mean, an American just got shot in the head. Where, where, where is everyone? Where's the accountability? I just don't get it anymore. And you know what? I, I, I might be going off the lamb here. If you're Jewish and you vote for Democrats, you're crazy. I'm sorry. You're insane. Just look at Schumer. Look down the line. They're all, they're, they, they don't have our backs. Well, thanks for noticing. Uh, you know, it took you years. Uh, you should have been listening to my radio show. You'd be way ahead of the curve, I think, otherwise. And he's talking about how uh, Kamala Harris, oh, yeah, the protesters and you know, Joe Biden at the Democratic National Convention when there were pro-Hamas mobs outside of the United Center in Chicago where the Democrats were having their, their corrupt racist convention, uh, Joe Biden said this. Those, trust, those protesters out in the street, they have a point. A lot of innocent people are being killed on both sides. Yeah, uh, again, you care about Ukraine because uh, like 600,000 people have been killed there. Does that matter at all? Now, this is a, uh, the answer is no, it doesn't, because the left doesn't care about human life. There's the old Joseph Stalin saying, which is now a Democrat party saying, a single death is a tragedy, George Floyd. A million deaths are a statistic, Ukraine. The Democrat party proves the the axioms, the axia of the 20th century in spades. Can you say in spades? All over the place. Just uh, just amazing. These people. Can I just say these people? Mm-mm-mm. Extraordinary. Uh, all right, now let's uh, let's go back to the uh, – oh, this one, this one uh, makes me laugh. Uh, and – I got this. I think I got this one on Friday. When did we get this one, Michael? On tearing up the lawn at McGill University in Canada. Just amazing. I think it was Friday. Yeah, I think it was Friday afternoon. And and these lunatics, see, they went there because the left hates the Jews. And they, you know, we're going to need denazification on campuses all over the place. And at McGill University in Canada, America's hat. America's largest national park. Just extraordinary. They were camping out on the lawn there last year for so long that it killed the whole lawn. It killed the lawn at McGill University. So the school, while the uh, cute little Nazis were gone for the summer, they replaced the lawn with um, sod, you know, new grass, sod. And these pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel, free Palestine lunatics vandalized the lawn at McGill University. Now the the sod is very expensive too, and, and you know, and it requires resources and water and fertilizer and and human energy and labor workers. Work they like to call people workers. I'd like call them people and taxpayers and stuff like that. Uh, and they're tearing up the lawn at McGill University because they they killed the lawn last year, and the and the sod was uh, fresh and green and thick. It looked very nice, didn't it? And they had big pieces, and they and they tore up the sod because they're protesting. You know, they're protesting the existence of Israel, and they don't want Israel to exist. Palestinian protesters rip up sod at McGill University. Why? Why would they? Why would they do that? Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. In fact, I just went to this one, this uh, one article, and it's been removed from the internet. The article has been removed from the internet. 
because the fascists are big on censorship. And which political party in the United States is the party of censorship? Which one is that? Oh, that's the so-called Democratic Party. That is the party of censorship. So McGill Quebec politicians denounce unacceptable vandalism on campus. Video shows protesters tear up sod that had been installed where a pro-Palestinian encampment used to be located. Out of Montreal, Montreal, and uh, Quebec in Canada. So McGill University and Quebec politicians are denouncing how a group of demonstrators tore up parts of the university's lawn during a pro-Palestinian protest on Friday. Video circulating online, protests are going to be seen ripping up the freshly laid sod installed where pro-Palestinian encampment had been erected on campus. Montreal police were called to intervene, and a criminal investigation is underway. They had to put in the sod because that's where they camped last year, urinating and defecating all over themselves for months on end to protest the existence of the, the state uh, of Israel. Now, Montreal Mayor Valerie Plant, that's P-L-A-N-T-E, no relation, Valerie Plant, echoed the university's position in a post on X saying destroying property is not a form of protest. Don't be silly, Valerie Planty, and it's a P-L-A-N-T-E. There are a lot of French Canadians. It's you know, it's, it was my stepfather's name, as you know. My real father's name was was Orteg, a different thing altogether. Uh, but a lot of French Canadians named Plant. Uh, there are. Don't hold it against me. I didn't do it. Uh, so they tore up the uh, this out because you know, uh, just amazing, because that's what they do. Mm-mm. Now, in the meantime, Joe Biden was returning to the White House from how long was he on vacation? He was at a billionaire's multi-thousand-acre ranch in the San Ynez Valley in California behind Santa Barbara, where I lived for seven years in beautiful Santa Barbara. Used to be a lot more beautiful that Democrats have really laid it to waste. Mentally ill, drug-addicted, homeless, illegal aliens have taken over, and the Democrats think that makes it better. That makes it better. But Joe Biden was arriving, and that is so the, uh, the multi-billionaire Democrat donors ranch in, uh, outside of Santa Barbara in the San Ynez Valley, and then uh, right to the beach in Delaware, where he spent another, I don't know, eight months or something, because he's, that boy is totally checked out. He's checked out of the presidency so big time, and, uh, and the media is fine with it. But he was arriving uh, south lawn of the White House Marine Corps helicopter built by the Patriarchy. You're welcome in a White House built by the patriarchy. And uh, never mind that. Joe Biden was asked, hey, have the Jews done enough to accommodate the genocidal terrorists that are murdering them? Mr. President, do you think it's time for Prime Minister Netanyahu to do more on this issue? Do you think he's doing enough? No. No. No, Netanyahu is not. And and note the question, because... The Democrat Party program is the same as the Hamas program, and that is to blame Israel and to blame Benjamin Netanyahu, a former commando. His brother was killed in, a, in the raid on Entebbe. His older brother was a commando, too. Uh, he's a uh, prime minister. He's a strong defender of civilization itself, of Western civilization. And the Democrat Party is not on the side of civilization anymore because— They're not liberals. They're the left. You know, football season is here, and price picks, price picks is the best place to get real money sports action while while watching football. Season-long fantasy takes so much time, but on price picks, you can pick a new lineup every day if this is your wish. The app is really simple to use. Pick two or more players across any sport, Pick more or less on their projections, and you could win up to 100 times your money. 100 times your money. On price picks, you can still cash out, you know, even if the lineup isn't perfect and all your withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. Not only that, but price picks is is the only daily fantasy app with injury insurance. That's right. You have injury insurance. If one of your players goes down in the in the first half, prize picks doesn't count it as a loss. 
Just, you know, some of the many ways that Price Picks, Prize Picks, Prize Picks puts its members first. Members like you. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code PLANT, P L A N T E, and get $50 credit instantly when you play just $5. All you have to do is play $5, you get a $50 credit. That's code PLANT, P L A N T E, on Prize Picks to get a $50 credit instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive a $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks. Run your game. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. Bam, 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 bam. Yes, sir. Uh, We've got uh, more Democrat craziness coming up, too. And can I get to Senator Tom Cotton with Kristen Welker on NBC? Because that was... That was quite a demonstration of American journalism that I watched on Sunday, day before yesterday. Let's go to the uh, telephones. Let's go to Todd calling from Rockville, Maryland. Oh, Todd, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Chris, good morning. Good to talk to you. It's been a long time. Welcome. So I was a Columbia grad back in 86 from the business school uh-huh. when Columbia was halfway normal. Uh-huh. I wasn't a little rich kid. I was a state school kid who worked hard and eventually got myself through that university. But, you know, it was in 2006, if my memory recalls, when Columbia hosted dear old uh, President Ahmadinejad from Iran to come to Columbia and sit there and spew hatred on the United States. I remember and that, here too. We're, here is where we are today. Yeah. And so what I say to all of my Columbia brothers and sisters who are out there in New York, I'm here in D.C., who's going to stand up and say it's time to march on this university as alumni and let's go take out the trash? Because it's time to do that. It most definitely is. I am. Uh, I am telling you, it's time that you know good people uh, stand up. It is uh, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. And what we've got going on in the United States these days is a whole lot of good men doing nothing. And and Todd, you're a hundred percent right. I couldn't be more with you. Thank you for checking in on that. We're at eight 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 six three zero nine six two five. Politics too coming up. In Iran, we don't have homosexuals like in your country. We don't have that in our country. In Iran, we do not have this phenomenon. I don't know who's told you that we have it. Now, I mentioned this uh, a little bit earlier, and it's and it's uh, very important stuff. The Democrats want to do away with the U.S. Constitution because they are authoritarian and dictatorial at, at their core. They're no longer democratic. They're no longer liberal. They are quite the opposite, and half or even most of them aren't smart enough to realize what's happened to them, and and the rest are so corrupt that they're they're fine with that. Uh, Remarkable stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Um, uh, And I did. I never finished with the uh, McGill University, the sod. Uh, They had to tear up the lawn there where the encampment, uh, the pro-Palestinian encampment was for months. And they had to, in their own words, they had to decontaminate the soil where the pro-Palestinian protesters, who are a bunch of white liberals, or so they think, had been living for months, and I was mocking that they were, uh, you know, defecating and urinating all over the soil, but they said they had to decontaminate the soil. Well, I mean, were they enriching uranium there? What were they? No, they were, they were um, uh, it was uh, bodily waste that contaminated the soil at McGill University in Canada, and, and they had to remove the soil and start over again, and then lay the sod down, and then the the pro-Palestinian Jew haters came back, and they ripped up all the sod. That was just on Friday that they did that. They're quite demented. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, sir. 
and um, the flyers being handed out at Columbia University in New York City are, are actual Hamas flyers. They're actual literal Hamas flyers. And here are the photographs of the flyers. Front page feature, features the spokesman of Hamas includes quotes from the Al-Aqsa Martyrs, the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade. They're martyrs because they kill themselves while murdering people. And this is uh, politically popular in circles that call themselves liberal circles. And in the United States, that means Democrat Party circles. In Columbia University in New York City and Manhattan, glory to Gaza that gave hope to the oppressed. You're not the oppressed. You're savage, genocidal, bloodthirsty ghouls and goblins that humiliated the invincible Zionist army. They put the word invincible in quotation marks because, and there's a, an outline of uh, the map of Israel there. Uh, you, you know, you guys are lucky to be living in the, in the most advanced, the most liberal. I guess they don't want to live in a liberal country where gay people aren't always thrown off of rooftops. Uh, but they're handing out the flyers at Columbia University, and the flyers are uh, quite remarkable. Hamas propaganda. We will emerge upon you from where you least expect it. That's, uh, I mean, these are the slogans of Hamas. And they have them in English, and uh, the Democrats are, are teaching this. We need denazification of American college campuses. Dehamasification of American college campuses. And in the meantime, in between time, and we got fun, the Democrat Party looking to do away with the Constitution of the United States of America, the New York Times, New York Times last week, the Constitution is sacred. Is it also dangerous? That's the headline in the New York Times. The New York Times has that, has that story and that headline because it's time they believe to do away with the U.S. Constitution. Why would they want to do away with the Constitution of the United States? Well, I say, you know, it's the usual radical left-wing extremist stuff. It was written by, you know, old white men centuries ago, and how could it possibly apply in the 21st century, the U.S. Constitution? Pretty amazing stuff. Well, gosh, I don't know. It's been working better than any other document in the history of the world for centuries now. Why would you want to do away with it? Well, they are definitely sending a clear signal here. The New York Times featuring an op-ed asking whether the Constitution is dangerous, writing Americans have long assumed that the Constitution could save us, semicolon, They semi-love their semicolons. A growing chorus now wonders whether we need to be saved from it. This is the New York Times on the U.S. Constitution. The document that's supposed to be a bulwark against authoritarianism can end up fostering the widespread cynicism that helps authoritarianism grow. Well, certainly that's how the Democrats are using the Constitution, to the extent that they're using the Constitution at all today. One of the biggest threats to American America's politics might be the country's founding document, writes Jennifer Zazzle at the, uh, at the New York Times. The United States Constitution is in trouble. That's their opening sentence. After Donald Trump lost the 2020 election, he called for the, quote, termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Whether he actually said that or not would have to be fact-checked since it's in the New York Times. Outraged critics denounced him for threatening a document that is supposed to be sacrosanct by announcing his desire to throw off constitutional restraints in order to satisfy his personal ambitions. Trump was making his authoritarian inclinations abundantly clear. So that's the uh, the New York Times there now. Now, she's going to quickly turn the corner to, yeah, we've got to get rid of the Constitution, right? It's no surprise, then, that liberals charge Trump 
with being a menace to the Constitution, but his presidency and the prospect of his re-election have also generated another very different argument, that Trump owes his political assent to the Constitution, making him a beneficiary of a document that is essentially anti-democratic and, in this day and age, increasingly dysfunctional. This is the New York Times because they, uh, it, you know, they need to do away with the Constitution. It's, it's pretty amazing stuff. And then they, uh, they write because it's a circle fest and a hot tub. Back in 2018, they're talking about the, this uh, professor of law and now the dean of the law school at UC Berkeley, University of California at Berkeley, Erwin uh, Chemerinsky, Erwin Chemerinsky, uh, then pretty much simultaneously wrote a piece that appeared in the Los Angeles Times also last week. Erwin Chemerinsky, who is an anti-democratic, anti-American, commie, lefty, uh, tenured college professor, law professor, right? And in 2018, Chemerinsky, the dean of Berkeley's law school, still seemed to place considerable faith in the Constitution, pleading with fellow progressives in his book, We the People, not to turn their back on the Constitution and the courts. No democracy lasts forever. See, it's a by, you know, by contrast, no democracy lasts forever is markedly pessimistic. Now, and here is, uh, we have an audio uh, soundbite I want to play for you of the dean of the UC Berkeley School of Law, a radical left-wing extremist and perfectly mainstream Democrat, Erwin Chemerinsky, on the Constitution of the United States of America. Choices that were made in adopting the Constitution have come to haunt us. The Electoral College increasingly is choosing the president who lost the popular vote. Two senators per state Ah. is undermining democracy. In the last session of Congress, there were 50 Democratic senators and 50 Republican senators. But the 50 Democratic senators represented 42 million people. Life tenure for Supreme Court justices is increasingly problematic. For much of American history, the tenure for Supreme Court justice was an average of 15 years. Since 1970, it's been 27 years. All of these are choices made in 1787, but they've become much more salient in recent years. Now, he attacked the uh, lifetime terms for Supreme Court justices. He attacked the Electoral College. He attacked senators, uh, a, a state like South Dakota has two senators and a state like California with a much larger population, has two senators, and how outrageous that is. Now, the Democrats, you see, could control the United States Senate and beyond just by owning California and New York population centers, perhaps Florida as well. Then they'd control everything. And the rest of the country be damned. Flyover country would officially be relegated to the ash heap of history because the Democrat Party, the left, uh, holds the U.S. Constitution— the most sacred document perhaps in human history, in such contempt. And wait a minute, the uh, senator is only screwed up, I think, his, uh, his uh, language. Uh, California, two senators represent 42, just from California, represent 42 million people, he said. And that is who he was trying to say, but I think he mangled it. And you get two senators from Alaska, you know, with like 12 people in the state. And that's terrible. That's corrupt. No, actually, that's by design. That's genius. That's brilliant. And we should also go back to allowing state houses to uh, appoint their senators that they send to Washington rather than electing by popular vote, which was a change that we shouldn't have made. The Electoral College is absolute genius. It's stone stone called genius. It's amazing how uh, brilliant the founders were in coming up with these ways. The thing is, it levels the playing field. It uh, they talk about equity. The, the Electoral College is equity. All right? and, and he's complaining, oh, but you lost the popular vote, but you won the Electoral College. That's part of the system. It's built in. It's genius. It's brilliant. And uh, dumb people don't understand it. And Erwin uh, Chemerinsky, the, the uh, professor emeritus, no doubt, from UC Berkeley School of Law, the dean of the School of Law there, now wants to dismantle the U.S. Constitution. The New York Times jumped in after 
Erwin Chemerinsky wrote his piece and it was published in the Los Angeles Times. You know, at the at the New York Times, they fired their head of the editorial uh, board because he allowed Senator Tom Cotton uh, a piece that he had written to be published. And, you know, they're anti-democratic, they're anti-free speech. They are the left. They are authoritarian. And they are the Democrat Party. Just uh, extraordinary, extraordinary stuff. And, you know, with that, I just mentioned Tom Cotton. Tom Cotton on Sunday, I was watching Subjecting My Best Girl to uh, Meet the Press on Sunday, and it was quite horrible. It was quite terrible. I, uh, you know, also... I'd like to get to, to Kamala doing her funny voice. Uh, her uh, they like to do accents, you know. But let's go to um, let's go to soundbite number thirteen. Number thirteen, Senator Tom Cotton, who is a Harvard Law School guy who joined the U.S. Army after Harvard Law School. They wanted him to be in the Judge Advocate General Corps, the JAG Corps. He said, "No, I want to be a combat soldier," and he was sent to Afghanistan with a rifle instead of being a lawyer for the army. Uh, and now he's a U.S. senator. Uh, and they hate him for it. And the New York Times uh, tried to censor him and then fired the person that didn't censor him because they're fascists. Tom Cotton on Meet the Press talking about the hostages being held and and this fake reporter, Kristen Welker, talked over him the whole time, shouted him down, didn't allow him to talk. I think it, we should note that these hostages were discovered in the tunnels under Rafa. That's where Joe Biden and Kamala Harris put pressure on Israel not to enter for months, used an arms embargo to try to keep them from entering. Kamala Harris Listen to this. even said that Israel shouldn't enter Rafah because she had studied the maps. What the <laughs> Biden-Harris administration should have done from the beginning is not pressure Israel to restrain its response, but let Israel win from the very outset. For 11 months, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have put more pressure on Israel than they put on Hamas and Iran and Iran's other terror proxies. Now, uh, Kristen Welker sitting there waiting to be a Democrat then had to jump in and say, well, well, it wasn't an embargo. We just embargoed arms. And, Senator, just to be clear, there, of course, is no arms embargo. It is true that the Biden administration did halt one uh, shipment of arms out of concern no, of that's civilian not, that's not casualties. Correct. No, Kristen, there, there that's is, not correct. It is correct. There's no there arms was embargo. For, for weeks, for weeks, the Biden-Harris administration put an embargo, not just on large 2,000-pound bombs, which, of course, are needed to penetrate these deep and buried tunnels, but on things like tank rounds and artillery shells was, and mortar no, rounds. It was, yes. just one, it was just one shipment no, of arms. No, it was the 2,000-pound weapons large that you're talking about and 500 pounds. It was a large, category of, weapons. But was a large having, category of weapons. Okay, but they have now moved forward with that. It's not an arms embargo, should, though, just to be very clear. That's a place, very specific it was in place, term, and it's not it an was arms in place, embargo. It was in place for many weeks, okay. specifically to try to prevent Israel from entering Rafa where these hostages were discovered. And it wasn't just 2,000-pound bombs. It was also 500-pound bombs and other bombs. We had bombs. simply backed Israel yeah. to the hilt from October 7th. This war would probably be over. We probably would have found many more hostages alive, and there would have been fewer civilian casualties caused by Hamas's infliction of those civilian casualties on its own people. But at every turn, yep. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have put more pressure on Israel than they have on Iran and Hamas. Than they have on a run. I can't get into all the audio I'd like to get into her. She kept arguing with him. Or No, it was just one arms shipment. It was just one. It was and, one arms shipment. Let's talk about Prime Minister No, Kristen, it was, it was more than, Let's it was many more. Prime no, Minister Kristen. Netanyahu. Yeah, and then, uh, and then she blamed uh, uh, Netanyahu because the Jews must be blamed. Do you believe Prime Minister Netanyahu bears any responsibility for not getting a deal sooner? No, I believe Hamas bears responsibility for not turning these hostages back over to their families and surrendering. For taking hostages and murdering all those people and declaring war. And uh, and Tom Cotton had to argue back and forth and back and forth. And then Kristen Welker also talked about how great it was that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were present for the the uh, uh, dignified return of the, of the bodies of the 13 from the botched Afghanistan withdrawal. And uh, Kamala Harris was not there. They then posted a, on X a quick statement saying, oh, I, I misspoke. Uh, okay, Kamala wasn't there. And Joe Biden did check his watch again and again and again. The news media is the most corrupt institution in America. But uh, I don't know, it looks like universities are catching up, doesn't it? 
going after the Constitution, supporting Hamas over Israel. Denazification, dehamasification of the Democrat Party of American campuses, of American culture, because of what the Democrat Party has done. And their hero, Yahya Sinwar, is traveling around dressed like a woman which will only elevate his standing in the Democrat Party, won't it? If only they, they could have had him speaking at the Democratic Convention, too, dressed like a lady. She never has spoken to them or taken a meeting with them. Well, it's they, they did her, meet with them during the Dignified it's Transfer. Because of they her, were with them at the Dignified Transfer. Her and, her and Joe Biden's incompetence, that those 13 Americans were killed in Afghanistan. Any major military operation in Rafah would be a huge mistake. Let me tell you something. I have studied the maps. There's nowhere for those folks to go. She studied the maps. Well, if the Egyptians would let them in, there'd be plenty of place to go. They're Arab brethren, but they'd kill them faster than the Israelis. That's Kamala Harris. She's not very bright. Today at Columbia University in New York City, where Barack Obama went to school, um, a Fox News reporter woman, they're they're back to rioting and protesting against the Jews. And Columbia University has to divest from all things Israel otherwise. And they're talking to this dude who's dressed like a lady. And he's wearing a surgical mask. And he's got women's clothing on and long hair like your mother in the 1970s. and, And here's... New York City, Columbia University, Democrats hate the Jews, love the jihad. They'd throw this guy off a roof and kill him in a heartbeat, and it'd be really funny. Uh, But here's the transgender transvestite from Transylvania at Columbia University. ask you why you guys are out here today. We're here because there is still an ongoing genocide that the United States is materially and politically responsible for. That's not true. It's a transvestite, transgender, tranny, demented, mentally ill man dressed like a woman, acting like it's perfectly normal, condemning Israel and uh, doing Hamas's bidding for them like a good Democrat. 